Hello and welcome friends, my name is Frenzy here and I'm going to be bringing you an episode, a tutorial, a guide of sorts on making a reusable rocket. Okay, so what does that actually mean, a reusable rocket? Well, we want to land our core stage, our first stage typically, on our rocket. Now, we could land the second stage, potentially. I've, I've done that in the past in some videos, but I want to focus just on relanding that core stage. Again, this is a big stage, got a lot of engines, it's very pricey. So if you're in, for example, um, career and you're trying to save money, if you land that core stage, that's going to save you a lot of money. That's going to get you some money back. That's beautiful. That's what we want. This is the whole purpose of reusability in real life as well as in um, Kerbal Space Program, right? And honestly, I like to do it just because it's fun, but... Hey, whatever works for you. So today we're going to focus on building a reusable uh, first stage, right? And in order to do that, um, we're going to focus on a few key things. You know, I've built a lot of reusable crafts. I don't think I'm an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I've done it enough to where I know some of the things that are going to make it easier, that are going to make it a little bit better, hopefully. And we'll go ahead and jump right in. So you're going to need probe control, right? Without probe control, your stage will not be able to be landed. Not by your control, for sure. We need it to control our vehicle when it comes back. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and jump right in. We're going to grab some fuel tanks. I like these Jumbo 64 orange tanks. I think two of those are good. And here's what I like to do. Right? I get this um, Rocco Max X200 32 fuel tank. Oop, no, 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 sorry. X216 fuel tank. There we go. Right? So... We have this bad boy, okay, and I like to have this on here, and then I put on this 8 fuel tank, right? That's nice, too, and here's what we do. We close it out. Right-click on it, and you close it out. Now this fuel is no longer accessible to the engines that we're going to put on here. That means we don't have to worry about our fuel. You know, we can just, until this thing runs out, we can just focus on flying the craft. We don't have to worry about, oh, am I going to have enough fuel? Am I, when, do I cut here? Do I cut here? We have the fuel right here. We don't have to worry about it. The engines will cut out, and what we'll do is we'll turn it back on, and then we'll have plenty of fuel for landing. All right? So that, that works nice and easy. That's that's the way I like to do it. Makes it very simple to not have to worry about it. All right, so they're both closed out. That's perfect. Now, we want to focus on our engines. Engines are key. Here's I, I prefer the SpaceX, SpaceX method of engines in that we use multiple because if you use, say, just a mainsail, right? When you're running on, when you have just this fuel left, it's, it's very sensitive. Your throttle is very sensitive, right? You have to be very precise in your landing. And so to, in order to avoid that, what I like to do is I personally, personally, I like to use multiple engines because it, it kind of gives you a natural throttle down measure when you can turn them off and just use a select set of engines. So in order to mount all our multiple engines, we're going to go ahead and get a cubic octagonal strut. We already have it at times eight. Eight parts here. You go ahead and get just one more, stick it here at the bottom. And that is beautiful. We're going to space these out just a little bit, I think. Avoid engine clipping. And here's the key part. First of all, you want to place all your in engines individually. That way, when we action group it in just a few moments here, it's perfect and it, it works. You can select each one individually. You can turn off the ones you need to and it'll be beautiful. Because we're not going to land this on all the engines. That would defeat the purpose of having multiple engines. So we're going to use just three engines to land it, right? That way, um, we don't have to worry too much about, you know, oh, well, you know, I, I, have to be, I have to be very careful with my throttle. So we use multiple engines to combat that. Now, here's what I do for a for craft like this. I like to focus on using three gimbal engines, the three LV45, LVT45 swivel engines, right? Those are going to give us some measure of control, which when we're landing is important. It's nice to have that extra gimbal because we may not be coming down perfectly straight, right? In fact, I know we won't. So we're going to go ahead and take these three swivel engines, right? And we're just going to place them. Place them. Oh, no. What have I done? All right. So there we go. Ooh. There we go. That's perfect. So we have gimbaled engines now. Beautiful. We're going to go ahead and move this one up just a tad so it matches the others a little bit better. Now we got the Reliant engine. All right. So we've got our engines all squared away. Um, so that, that looks nice, right? All right, let's go back up here. Um, we will we'll do the action grouping towards the end here. I like to usually do my action grouping at the end. So we need to give ourselves some control at the top. And so there's a couple ways we can do this. We can put Verners. This is going to help us flip around and control during our descent a little bit better. Keep us on target, right? 
And here's the big one. Air brakes. This is going to save you fuel because you don't have to worry so much. I'm going to pull this out just and. All right, so that looks pretty good. A couple other things we may want to do here is we might want some batteries. Um, this probe core only has 30 electric charge. That's not great. We, we would probably run out of that. Um, so we want to add a couple extra batteries. We don't need much. Again, we want to keep this stage as light as we can because, well, it's got to land, and we want to keep this thing light and nimble and ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and move these down into it. So it looks a little bit better. This is coming along pretty nicely. This is a solid, reusable rocket right now. Um, let's see. Is there anything else that I am missing? I think we need to go ahead and do our action groups. Let's do that before we forget. And action grouping is key. Here's what I do. For the first one, for the first uh, action group, I shut around, shut down these big bullets. The LVT-30s. I'm going to go around and shut them all down. Not even worry about them. All right. And then these three I'm going to leave. These are what we're going to land on. Your SpaceX lands on a single engine. I don't think we can actually do that. I don't think this has a high enough thrust to weight ratio, even with minimal fuel. So um, for our sake, we're going to go ahead and say, well, 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 we'll just do these three. All right. So that's good. Now we need to look towards a second stage, right? Because you got to have the second stage of a rocket. This is good to go if we wanted to go ahead and land it. But... Gonna get, we're going to need um, a second stage because you you, you got to get into space somehow, right? That's the whole point of this. And so usually uh, you could reroute parts or just do a new section to build this. But I honestly, I like to go ahead and just build on top of it. I don't think it's too big. Here's the key thing, right? Because, because what's going to happen is we're going to launch this thing, right? And then for about 20, we're going to let this thing about 21 kilometers away. Before it goes out of physics range, before it deletes, um, well, not out of physics range, before it just deletes, I believe, um, it's going to be just chilling on its own, right? And so we need to get the second stage as far and high up as we can. That way we have the time to land this thing. This is the hard part in KSB because that 22 kilometer range, you must have a second or powerful second stage to get up there. And so I think we could do a couple things. We could try a skipper. I think a skipper would work well. Um, you can see it has, it depends on what we put on top of here. We can use a skipper or, if you want to be a little bit more adventurous, you could also use a, um, an RS, or KS-25, right? So let's, let's go ahead and use the skipper, though. I think that should give us the juice to get to where we need to go. We're going to go ahead and stick a, these on here. Now, I don't know, I would have to actually fly this, but, um... I think that should be good. I think that'll give us the power we need. And again, go ahead and, uh, oh yeah, don't forget to uh, add your decoupler as well. That's a key thing. Got our decoupler on there. That's nice, perfect. And we can go ahead and add another state. We're gonna put it up here, staging. Right. And another thing that I'm clearly forgetting to do, which is now we theoretically could land these on the on the engines, but they're a little bit sensitive. We want to go ahead and find our legs. Right. So we have a couple different options here. L2, I think, are going to give us the best possible choice. Right. And I like to go with just four. What you're probably going to have to do is you're going to have to do some part clipping in order to get this to work. Because there's no good legs in KSP that really give you um, what you're going to need. Fortunately. Alright. That looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and retract these bad boys. Oop. We want shielded. Because we might be coming through atmosphere. I don't know. Alright. So those look uh, Yeah, they don't look great. But they, they get the job done. Alright. So we're back to our second stage. Um, again, we're going to have to put a probe on it. Cap it off with a probe. Of course, we always want battery. Put some bigger batteries up here. Just to there. And then we're going to get some electric. Let's put a couple of these panels on here. That should be enough to power our second stage if we need it. We may not. 
then um, you can go ahead and stick a comms device on there for using uh, um, relay, right? Doesn't hurt to have that on there. Of course, what we're gonna want is a bearing, preferably, and a decoupler for whatever our payload is. Go ahead and do that. Let's get the coupler out. Good. Get our decoupler. We're gonna want a payload bearing. We put the decoupler first. That way, or no, no, sorry, the fairing first. That way we don't take the uh, fairing with us into space. No, no, no. <laughs> Delete this, please. All right. That way the fairing doesn't have to come with us into space, right? We don't want that. All right. And then we'll just go ahead and put up a simulated, few, like, mass. Um... This thing it probably is not going to have a ton of lift capacity. We're going to say we're going to lift, like, what, eight tons, nine tons that was into space. I am shell deploy on because it's beautiful. Build our fairing. Probably a little big. Why does it need to be that big? All right. Beautiful. That should get the job done. All right, let's go ahead and name this thing. Um, we'll name this the... Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's call it the uh, the Ender 9, because I'm a big fan of Ender's game. This is the Ender 9. And this is our fully completed rocket, so this looks pretty good. Um, you know, we have a couple key components here. Again, we have multiple engines that is going to help us land it down. A nice soft, soft touchdown, hopefully using these three engines with our action group. Our landing legs that'll help us land it. We have these separated fuel tanks. And one thing that's going to be a little bit tricky, maybe, is getting to the second one. But I, th I think it, it's pretty doable. So we'll be able to get to that. And we close these off. That way, um, this is our landing fuel, right? Okay. We have our fuel tanks here. We have our air brakes. This is going to slow us down. This is going to go ahead and use less aerodynamic. Or this is going to require, require us to use less... Um, Less fuel because it's going to be creating drag, aerodynamic drag. We have our control, our Werner engines to give us a little bit of extra control. And then we have our powerful second engine stage because we're going to need to boost up. And of course, of um, this friendly little thing right here. There are solar panels to give us a little bit of power. We have our fairing, and it looks beautiful. So now we've, we have constructed a fully operational, reusable core stage. Hope you guys have really enjoyed this. Hopefully this will help you in your own constructions. Um, I would love to see what you guys are creating too. Let me know how it goes. Let me know if this worked for you. Any suggestions or advice, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. If you like this video, tap that like button. It really means a lot to me. It lets me know you guys are interested in the video. Of course, if you'd like to see more, subscribe. I would love to have you here. I stream regularly on twitch.tv slash frenzy1. If you'd like to come by there as well, I would love to have you. And... As always, I'll see you next time. Have a great day.